All right, thanks so much for sharing your garden with us. And now we're gonna turn our attention back to the gardens and garden maintenance. And you know what, the heat is on. And here to help us with the heat and all the pests and problems that come with it is Ginger Hudson. And welcome back to the program, Ginger. Thank you, Tom. Yeah, it's great to have you here. You came on a short while ago and we're talking about your ebook on, and uh, we're gonna be referencing that again. But, uh, you know, summer maintenance means a lot of pests are popping up and mm -hmm. obviously dealing with the sun and drought and situations like that. Let's start off with a handy tool that you want to use as mm -hmm. your kind of tool of the season. Mm -hmm. My recommended tool for the summer is the hose and sprayer. Mm -hmm. And I recommend the model with the metal handle. I've found that for me, the plastic handles wear out too fast, especially sure. as much as you, sometimes you have to use it. Right. It's very handy because you can turn your water off and on, fill your product in the bottle, adjust the top to the number of tablespoons per gallon you want to disperse. You don't have to worry about mixing it yourself. Right. For general heat stress, keep the nozzle the way it comes, spray foliarly on the tops of the mm -hmm. leaves. For spider mites, for uh, webworms, anything else, rotate the sprayer right. and get up underneath those leaves. And the sprayer, and that of course just directs the spray mm -hmm. and makes it very easy to clean the underside of the leaves, which is absolutely critical for a lot of the pests. Yes. White fly, spider mites, you name Mealy it. Mealy bugs, yeah. uh, which can lead to other infestations. And another tip on using this in the heat of the summer morning. Use mm -hmm. it in the morning right. before it gets too hot because you can just add to the stress of your plants by putting mm -hmm. water on them in the heat of the day and they burn. Right, right. First well, thing in the morning. Right, well, it's, it's always nice to have a little review of tools and that the sprayers are, I think, one of the most important things you can have. Mm -hmm. This and, and the pump sprayers. Uh, Hand pump sprayer. Yeah, mm -hmm. those are yep. invaluable. Mm -hmm. Well, lots of things to control using that device. And let's start with talking about spider mites because mm -hmm. that is a pest one of summer, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A lot of different plants are particularly impacted by it. What, what do you notice them as their favorite on the menu? <laughs> Favorites are, the top two probably are rosemary, which we use a lot here mm -hmm. because it can handle our weather. Right. And boxwood, mm -hmm. but it affects roses as well. And Italian cypress. Italian cypress. cypress. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I typically will just go to the garden and now as I'm, I hand water my garden. So when I'm going around, plants mm -hmm. are susceptible, I just jet them down with water as, mm -hmm. as first line of defense. First line of defense, it's so easy. It's right there, it's right. physical. You don't have to worry about any chemicals. Mm -hmm. uh, and the spider mites are there because it's hot and dry. Mm -hmm. The plant's stressed and they've found the right place. Uh, and you'll, f you'll notice the spider mites by the leaves being pitted with yellow. Right. Ye yellow spots. They just start to looks sad, I yes. mean, it's, you know, paler, you know, more just, mm -hmm. you know, kind of, mm, <laughs> you know, and, uh, and look for the fine webbing too. Yes, mm -hmm. and if you really want to double check that white piece of paper, shake the leaves, and if you get the little red spots yeah. falling down. Yeah, but usually by the time you get to that point, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a little gone. <laughs> right. Another big pest of the season are chinch bugs. Mm -hmm. And this is one that often you have to resort to chemical warfare if you have a bad yeah. infestation. Yeah. So what's your, yeah. what's your recommendation there? for? Again, it's uh, environmental mm -hmm. conditions, mm -hmm. uh, not enough water, and Generally, they strike the St. Augustine grass, which mm -hmm. is tough to keep here anyway. Yeah, another um, reason to nick St. Augustine. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, but for natural remedies, you could use a garlic spray, mm -hmm. uh, orange oil mixed mm -hmm. with it, or just orange oil, in, again, with the sprayer diluted. Mm -hmm. Uh, but proper watering techniques for that grass. If you can keep that grass healthy, which is hard to do in our environment, mm -hmm. that's number one. So that means watering in the morning, right? Uh, letting it soak in. Don't just water real quick and run because that's only hitting the top. Deep watering once a week. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, that's the trick. You know, mm -hmm. you save water, and you encourage the plants to develop deep roots, yes. and they're going to be a lot healthier and happier. Yes. Exactly. Very simple. But then you can always replace the St. Augustine altogether <laughs> too. <laughs> Which I think is a good idea. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, um, another thing that pops up often in summertime in times of stress is chlorosis. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, this is uh, can be deficiency of a number of different things, most commonly iron. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So remedies for uh, dealing with that. Uh, foliar spraying mm -hmm. is a good start if it's a light case. So again, your hand sprayer, and mm -hmm. you can mix in a product like, put a product in here like ironite or liquid seaweed with iron or mm -hmm. iron tone. Uh, if it's a heavy case, if your leaves are really yellowing, mm -hmm. then in gallon buckets and just drench the soil. You need to get it in the roots, but the spray on the leaves can yeah. help as well. Yeah, uh, That's a case of our soil, just it binds that iron mm -hmm. up and it we're too alkaline for the plants to get enough iron out of the soil yeah. that they need. The liquid seaweed with iron is one of my standard things. I never am without, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. it, and it helps in so many different ways and mm -hmm. the plants respond to it pretty they well. They do. Yeah. They respond really quick and again it's wonderfully low impact because you can put it on the leaves and not worry about hurting the plant that way as well mm -hmm. as water. Absolutely, right. Well, um, the chlorosis is something that people would be, should be looking out for, but uh, you know, of course, when we think of summer stresses, we think about water or lack mm -hmm. thereof. Mm -hmm. um, you have an image that you're sharing with us of a uh, one of my favorite plants, which is a little gem magnolia. I'm worried about these now being out of our region just because of the lack of water. Right, right. Uh, so there can be a couple of causes for the lack of water. Maybe you just don't know how or, or are watering enough, or maybe you just transplanted it. Mm -hmm. uh, but a lot of cases are homes that have sprinkler systems. Right. And the plants have grown up and blocked those sprinkler heads. Mm -hmm. So in the little gym, it's really obvious to see the whole leaf turns brown. Yeah. There's not splotches on it. It just, no, it just and goes. starts falling. Yeah, right. So monitoring your water systems, mm -hmm. whether it's automatic system or you're you doing it yourself with hose in sprinklers, mm -hmm. making right. sure the water's getting where it needs to be. Yeah, and you know, so often people think that because they have a, a sprinkler system that they don't need to do supplemental watering or that, you know, the, mm -hmm. again, that light or more frequent watering is sufficient for large plants as well as turf, and mm -hmm. it's not. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. It needs to soak, get down in there and yeah. get, the, get the soil underneath, as you mentioned earlier. Yeah. Deep roots. Deep roots are critically important. And again, on that whole thing about any any plant that's been newly planted or transplanted, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you've got to treat it, you know, those as the same case. It's, mm -hmm. a, new, it's a new plant, even if mm -hmm. it's an old plant, you've, but if you just moved it, mm -hmm. it's new yes. for all intents and purposes. Yes, you need to monitor that, water it, even if it's uh, winter or, or summer or mm -hmm. spring, whenever you've moved mm -hmm. it. Make sure that you water it because our air is dry mm -hmm. with the winds, with the low humidity, so the plant is losing moisture from above as well right. as trying to get it in too fast in the soil. Right. And if we don't have enough rain, that soil is going to be dry. Yeah. Sun, you know, a lot of people don't think about plants getting sunburned, but mm -hmm. uh, boy, you sure see it out there in, in, mm -hmm. in the Texas gardens. And mm -hmm. I think one of the saddest looking plants, if it gets sun almost at all, is the Aspidistra or the cast iron plant. Yes. <laughs> it, looks, it, it will immediately turn that horrible straw yellow color. Yeah. You and know. it's such a big leaf, you can't right. miss it. <laughs> right, right. But uh, absolutely, uh, uh, terribly unhappy if mm -hmm. it gets exposed to the sun. But there are mm -hmm. a lot of other plants in that category. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, spireas, the mondo grasses. Mm -hmm. I've even seen the African irises uh, Japanese suffer. Japanese maple. Maples, especially. Mm -hmm. The magnolia, again, mm -hmm. can get spotty. It, Roses mm -hmm. sometimes, even yeah. though they're hardy for us. Even agaves can get sunburned. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, and aloes. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Yeah. Yep. Well, well, last time you came on the show, you were uh, you were unveiling a, an ebook which has a lot of basic information, like we're talking about right mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. But it actually shows people mm -hmm. how to do a lot of these different things. Tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about that. Yes, thank you. The book, Landscape Maintenance for Central Texas Gardens, mm -hmm. and it, being that it's electronic, it's interactive. Mm -hmm. So that's the beautiful thing about it. There, I have slideshows in there that show different plants and the sunburn, so you can see what that looks like. Right. Or if it's deficient watering, you can see what it looks like transplanted with poor water, mm -hmm. and then instructions on how to remedy those situations. Okay, well, we really appreciate you coming back. Ginger, thank you so thank much you. for being here. I recommend that 
your uh, ebook to our audience. So they'll learn lots of other great summer tips in there, mm -hmm. including about weeding. So yes, check it out. Yeah. We didn't get a chance to talk about that, but mm -hmm. thanks you for being on the show. Thank you, Tom. And coming up next is Daphne. Mm -hmm.